Carvel Ice Cream calls itself America's freshest ice cream. And it's easy to see why it's making this claim. Its founder, Tom Carvel, discovered the soft serve method, and it has a delicious list of unique novelty ice cream. But Carvel Ice Cream didn't plan to become a multi-million dollar corporation. Through pure luck, Tom Carvel only got the idea for his most significant discovery, the soft serve method. But luck or not, Carvel Ice Cream has become a world-renowned brand. However, it didn't have it easy. It faced bumps on its journey, and it almost crumbled under the weight of growing success. This is the wacky story of Carvel's Ice Cream, and you're absolutely gonna love it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more. Tom Carvel was born Athanasius Carvelas on July 14, 1906, in Athens, Greece. He moved with his family in 1910 to the United States, and by 1926, he had tried his hands at several jobs. He was once a drummer and a test driver. However, his adventures briefly got cut short when a doctor misdiagnosed him with tuberculosis. To get better, Carvel believed that the less polluted air of Westchester, New York would be the best for him. What he didn't know was that he was about to meet his luck. In 1929, Tom Carvel, the founder of Carvel Ice Cream, took a loan of $15 from Agnes, the love of his life and the woman he eventually married. Tom used the loan to buy items he would use to make ice cream that he would sell out of the back of a truck. Tom planned to travel the world and sell ice cream and did so for a few years. After a few years of traveling, he suffered a setback. In 1934, on Memorial Day weekend, Tom's ice cream truck broke down in Hartsdale, New York while he was doing a sales run. He stared at a monumental loss, but luckily, a pottery shop was nearby. Using electricity from that shop, Tom prevented all the ice cream from melting and was able to sell all of his products within two days. He was even able to sell the ones that had already melted. Tom realized two things from his misfortune. He found out that having a fixed location was good for his ice cream business. He also discovered that people preferred the partly melted ice cream, which was softer and creamier. Armed with this knowledge, he struck a deal with the pottery shop owner next to the spot his truck stopped. The pottery shop allowed Carvel to let the truck remain on his property, and in the first year of having a fixed ice cream stop, Tom Carvel made over $3,500. In 1936, eventually, he bought the pottery shop and turned it into his first Carvel ice cream shop. Having a fixed shop, he made over $6,000 in 1939. But Tom had two secrets that made him make all that money. Enjoying the video? Like and subscribe to our channel for more. In 1936, Tom, keen on improving his business and capitalizing on his discovery, began to find a way to make producing his newly discovered soft ice cream easier. This led to him inventing and patenting a special no-air pump machine that helped him serve his soft ice cream to his customers. He also used marketing gimmicks such as the buy one get one free concept which helped drive sales. Later, Tom invented and patented the soft serve machine in 1939. But like the 1936 device, this one wasn't the complete soft serve machine. In the 1940s, with his machine in tow, Tom set on the road but left his wife Agnes to run their fixed shop at Hartsdale. Tom visited different carnivals, and when the Second World War began, things were about to become better for him. During the war, Tom got orders to go to Fort Bragg in North Carolina. Tom operated ice cream stands at the fort and worked as a refrigerator consultant. With the experience he gained, Tom improved his soft-serve ice cream machine. Tom decided to sell the machine and his knowledge of ice cream makers to some store owners for a fee and a percentage of their profits. At this point, soft-serve ice cream was gaining prominence as Dairy Queen, a big competitor, was already using the soft-serve method and had patented their device too. So Carville had ready buyers for his machine and sold a few units to these store owners in no time. But things didn't quite go as planned. The store owners Tom sold his freezers had different issues. Some couldn't meet up with the payment plans. While generally they didn't listen to Tom's instructions on using the machine to make ice cream. Also, the store owners didn't maintain proper health standards and some choose poor business locations. All of this annoyed Tom and according to him, he had to create the first ice cream franchise to manage these shop owners. They used his freezers, logos, and identity, and he didn't want people to attach his brand to mediocrity. So, to save his brand, Tom took all of these store owners to school. Tom began to teach these franchise owners what he knew about making soft-serve ice cream. This led Tom to creating the Carvel College of Ice Cream Knowledge, or as people fondly called it, the Sunday School. In 1967, Tom eventually bought a motel in Yonkers, which he named Carvel Inn, and used the basement of the inn for the school. 
The founder of Carvel Ice Cream also taught these new franchise owners how to market the ice cream and the importance of public relationships. The visionary business magnate also provided building plans for the franchises, which were initially shops with a glass front. With all of this, in the early 1950s, the business had expanded to over 50 stores. However, the best was yet to come. Allegedly in the mid-50s, while in New York, the Carvel ice cream founder heard a radio advertisement that one of the franchise owners made. He didn't like what he heard on the radio as it lacked crucial details like where the store location was. Tom believed that he could fix this and decided to advertise for his ice cream chain. He drove to the radio station and voiced the next commercial. His radio advertisement was a hit and people became more aware of Carvel's ice cream. People loved that Tom sounded genuine in his advertisements and he became a celebrity in the region. Due to the success of his distinct commercials, he created an in-house production studio at Carvel Ice Cream's HQ. Even when advertisements transitioned to television, Tom maintained the same style for their TV ads, using footage of staff, products, and regular-looking people. The business kept a pleasant public image, but trouble brewed within. In the 50s, some franchise owners sued Carvel Ice Cream for unfair business practices. The suit took nine years and the company won. However, the cost of the suit was high as the businesses reported major losses to their chains of businesses, but it got a $10.5 million compensation. However, the company's legal problem was just beginning. Tom was particular about quality and to maintain this, the businessman insisted that all the franchise owners had to get their ingredients from the chain, which was the contract they signed. The franchise owners claimed that the company was overcharging for the ingredients which were affecting their profit. Tom disagreed with the franchise owners and said they were looking for excuses to use low-quality products. The United States Federal Trade Commission sued Carvel Ice Cream for restraining trade. The suit made it to the United States Supreme Court in 1964, and eventually, the company was victorious. Carvel Ice Cream survived its competition despite being one of the many businesses using the soft-serve method. The company distinguished its business by declaring that it didn't fill its ice cream with air. When Carvel realized people were seeking out healthier desserts as part of the diet and fitness fever that gripped America, he adapted by making his own low-fat dessert. The brand also stood out by making novelty and holiday-specific cakes that their customers loved. By 1985, the business had around 865 stores. However, by the end of the 80s, Tom decided to sell his company to InvestCorp for $80 million. He retired and died in 1990. Selling the business changed how the brand operated. Carvel Ice Cream began selling to supermarkets, which severely affected the franchise owners. Soon, the Carvel stores dropped to 450, with supermarket sales accounting for half of the company's business in 1998. Eventually, InvestCorp sold to Rourke Capital in 2001, which promised to make the business favorable for franchise owners. However, Rourke instead went to create more supermarket presence. As of 2018, the brand was in 9,500 supermarkets, with franchises further reducing to 324. Carvel Ice Cream happened due to a stroke of fortune, but it continued to operate as a result of its founder's tenacity. Despite the lawsuits and the competition, the business continued to adapt and thrive until Tom sold the business. Selling brought good and bad news. The good news was that the company was making money, but the bad news was that the franchise owners were losing money. From having 850 franchises in 1985, the business now has 324. So, do you think the brand should focus only on making a profit, or should the company find a way to save the franchise owners from losses? Share what you think in the comments section, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.